What is going on everybody? It is the Phantom Michael and today I wanted to share with you some things that I picked up on our Sunday's pickup video. If you guys are excited for this video, please go ahead and smash that like button down below. Your support is always greatly appreciated. If you guys are new, please subscribe. Um, again, on Sundays, I like to share with everybody some of the items that I might have picked up throughout the week. Um, and we have a stack of games, uh, some old school video games or old school-ish video games that uh, I did find um, on my travels this week. So the first game that I found was none other than Marvel's Ultimate Alliance Special Edition. Um, again, this is like a uh, four player, um, up to four player. You get to pick any Marvel character that the game provides. Uh, you guys play through the game story mode, uh, level up. It's an RPG based game. Um, so it's really cool, but you know, it's got the back of it, man. You can get Blade in this game, which is pretty sick. Captain America, Spider-Man, Wolverine, Iron Man, Elektra, Thor, The Thing, Ghost Rider, um, you name it. There's a ton in here. Miss Marvel's in here. Um, I loved this game as a kid, um, seeing the opportunity to get it, so I had to grab it again. So again, yeah, this game was amazing. Um, so on this new edition of Sunday Pickups, I like to share a little bit of facts about the game. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start showing you guys some awesome screenshots. Marvel Ultimate Alliance is a 2006 action role-playing video game developed by Raven Software for the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, Xbox, and Xbox 360. Ultimate Alliance is set within the fictional Marvel Universe and features many of the superheroes, supervillains, and supporting characters that appear in in publications by Marvel Comics. It shares many similarities with Raven Software's previous Marvel titles, such as X-Men Legends and X-Men Legends 2 Rise of the Apocalypse. In that, it allows players to select from its vast cast to create the ultimate superhero team. The game features an original plot in which the heroes of the Marvel Universe must join forces to defeat Doctor Doom and his Masters of Evil to foil their plans for global domination. Upon release, the game was met with largely positive reviews from critics who praised the simple but entertaining gameplay and the impressive selection of iconic Marvel characters. Gameplay. Marvels can select teams of four from a range of more than 22 playable characters, although some characters are not initially available and need to be unlocked, allowing them to create their own superhero teams to recreate famous teams from the publications. Bonuses are also available if forming certain groups... The Avengers, Defenders, Fantastic Four, Marvel Knights, X-Men, the game has alternative endings dedicated by the number of optional missions the player completes, including our trivia, artwork, and simulator disc, which unlock non-story related missions for characters. Each character also has a variety of costumes that offer different advantages. The next game that we picked up, and it's X-Men Legends. So this is very similar to Ultimate Alliance, kind of, uh, I, I believe Ultimate Alliance is the predecessor to this game. Uh, some people prefer this version um, over um, Ultimate Alliance just because of the gameplay, the characters, etc. You know, Iceman, Storm, uh, Nightcrawler, Wolverine, of course, Cyclops, all the X-Men are in here, Toad. So you, you get to uh, enjoy a ton of X-Men. And, you know, it's kind of hit or miss if people, you know, prefer Avengers or the X-Men, you know. So, but they're in here. It's cool. Ultimate Alliance was more of a, you know, all superheroes when this one's really just stuck on the X-Men. But um, here you go. Here's some great information about the game and things that I enjoyed about it. X-Men Legends is an action role-playing video game developed by Raven Software and published by Activision. It was released on GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox consoles in 2004. Barking Lizard Technologies developed the Engage port of the game, which was released in early 2005. Players can play as one of the 15 X-Men characters with the ability to switch between four computer or human-controlled characters at any time. X-Men Legends follows Allison Kressmer, a young mutant who has the ability to summon and control volcanic activity. As Allison is taught to control her powers at the X-Mansion, the X-Men are sent on several missions. Eventually, the X-Men learn of Magneto's plan to cover the Earth in darkness from his base on Asteroid Mountain. X-Men Legends received generally positive reviews from critics. The Gameplay X-Men Legends is an action role-playing game. Players choose a team of up to four characters from a larger group of X-Men. As players proceed through the game, additional X-Men are unlocked. On the console versions, up to four players can play in the cooperative campaign. With the ability to add or remove players at any time, cooperative play features a refined combat system and the ability to interact with non-player characters. 
The game also features a skirmish mode, which allows players to fight against each other or against waves of computer-controlled enemies. As characters gain experience, players can upgrade their four main powers and other abilities unique to that character. Items found during gameplay can also be equipped to further enhance the character's abilities. Characters can combine attacks to create combos in which two or more players use their mutant powers on a single enemy target. The character's special abilities can be used to create a super combo when combined with an extreme power, which becomes available at level 15. Alright guys, our next game is an Xbox game. It is Brute Force for the Xbox. So this game I played a ton as a kid. It came out in like 2003. Um, I didn't actually own an Xbox, but a lot of my friends had Xboxes. I had a PlayStation 2, so we kind of swapped and got to play each other's consoles, which was pretty awesome. So um, this game right here is really sick. It's got a, a ton of interesting story on it. First per or not first person shooter, third person shooter. Um, a lot of sci-fi s things about this game. The one thing that I do remember is there's a cloning aspect where the other characters in the game are uh, you can clone yourself after your character gets defeated. Um, pretty crazy. I love Brutus. That's the guy's name who's um, right there, the, the lizard man. And uh, in the game, you do fight some of his relatives who are these red guys. Um, can't really remember the difference between the red and green variants of this species, but it was a fun game. So I hope you guys enjoy these facts that I got for you about it. Brute Force is a video game released for the Xbox by Microsoft in 2003. The game is a squad-based third-person shooter that uses four members of a team who fight in numerous battles. Each character on the team has their own strengths and weaknesses. The story is of a science fiction setting where humans spread throughout the galaxy and tensions arise with the threat of a hostile alien race that appears. The squad, Brute Force, is sent in to control the enemy. Brute Force began as a PC game in 2000, but was soon after turned into a first-party title for the Xbox, following the buyout of Digital Anvil by Microsoft. The gameplay. Brute Force was developed to be a third-person, squad-based shooter. This allows for both open-ended type gameplay and adding a tactical component by playing the characters according to their abilities. Engagement can be handled via stealth, sniper fire, a direct assault, each of the four playable characters has a special ability for approaching combat in their own way. Tex and Brutus are suited to direct assaults. Hawk is suited to stealth and Flint is suited for, to sniping enemies. The player switches between and issues orders to the characters via the D-pad. No online gameplay is offered with Brute Force. However, there is a cooperative play where another player may at any time control another character during the campaign. Up to four players are supported this way. After the mechanics of the squad-based gameplay, AI was perhaps the most important part of development. This was actually to complete the team-based system, which would allow the enemies to act intelligently and allow your team to support the player and work together as a team. The gameplay has four different command mods to which the AI reacts differently. The character are also aware of the environment in finding areas for cover and sniping as well as going to heal themselves. The single-player campaign missions are composed mostly of a series of battles where the player attempts to fight their way to the end. They consist mostly of objectives such as disabling structures, eliminating a target, or collecting an artifact. These missions take place in six different planets with different environments, a desert, a swamp, a volcanic planet, and an alien lair. The non-co-op multiplayer feature consists of choosing one squad, which usually represents different human factions and alien races and playing different game modes against other players. The different squads are unlocked as you complete the campaign. The first squad unlocked are the main characters of the game. Each squad member has a different set of weapons or abilities. All right, guys, the last game that I picked up this week is none other than Gladius. So Gladius is a really awesome game. It's a kind of like a tactical RPG. You get to build your own gladiator school. Um, they have up to mythical creatures on your team, centaurs, giants, etc. Um, really fun game. The story mode, it's, it's like 100 hours of playthrough, but uh, super, super fun. Um, there's over 500 characters in the game is something that it's claiming. So um, I can't remember. I just remember that I had, because uh, me and my cousin played this co-op, because you can't play the campaign co-op. And, uh, you know, I had my gladiators that I was over. He had his gladiators that he was over, and we just went through the game. 
Um, you know, I love wrecking with some archers, you know, and uh, I always like my sword and shield guy, kind of like the hero-esque character, but um, super fun. So, again, you know, we have some plans for Gladius, especially uh, coming up maybe this coming fall, so um, it'll be cool. So, if you guys enjoy it again, I hope you guys enjoy these facts about Gladius. Gladius. Gladius is a tactical role-playing video game developed and published by LucasArts. It was released in 2003 for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. Overview of the game. The game allows players to build a school of gladiators and take them into battle against opposing schools in a quest for fame and glory. The plot focuses on several of the main characters and slowly affects the decisions of the group, eventually leading to a final large battle that tests the skills of all members of the school. Upon starting the game, the player can choose between a school of Imperia, home to a strong military mentality, and soldiers who consider their northern neighbors uncivilized and bullish. Or you can choose a school in Nordaga, where witches and woodland beasts dwell, and who in turn detest the Imperials for their desire for greater conquest. The gladiators have the opportunity to travel through four distinctly different regions on their road to the ultimate championship. Depending on the player's school choice, they begin in either the northern lands of Nordia, barbarian-esque school, which has culture similar to that of Nordic lands, or Imperia Gladiator School, an Imperial Roman land. Upon completion of these two stages of play, one proceeds into the windward steppes, a grassland region dominated by archers and beasts. Reminiscence of the steppes of Asia, followed by the southern expansion of a desert region filled with spellcasters, nomadic warriors, and insects. The latter is an area reminiscent of ancient Egypt. The main insects of the region are beetles, which held a high importance in Egyptian mythology, and scorpions, a staple in arachnid in any desert region. The conclusion of the game takes place in and around a large central arena of Cathia in an imperial region. As in many role-playing video games, players outfit their characters with gear to increase their abilities, and as they win fights, they gain experience which allows them to don new equipment and undertake new quests. Additionally, winning certain hidden or difficult contests allow the players to recruit unique character classes such as yetis, minotaurs, and the undead. Fighting in Gladius uses a turn-based mechanism, but with a twist. There are swing meters, like those found in many golf games, that determines the accuracy and effectiveness of strikes. Multiplayer. Two game modes are offered here. Co-op, which allows up to four players to play in the story mode and complete the game side by side. The first player controls the movement throughout the world and also the menu screens. One player, one, engages in battle. The other players can enter and control the gladiators of their choice from the school. The other mode offered is a versus mode. All right, guys. Well, if you guys did enjoy this episode of Sunday Pickups and maybe you've seen something on here that maybe you have in your collection or something that you wish you had or remembered from your childhood, you know, this is the place to be. So let me know down in the comment section down below if you guys might have picked up something this week for yourselves. But uh, with that, everybody, I've been the Phantom Michael. I'm going to get the heck out of here, and I will see you guys in the next one.